This is KTVO's Good Morning Heartland. And welcome back. School is now in session for dozens of kids in the Heartland, a routine many parents were looking for. But now you have to worry about keeping your kids healthy through the school year. Dr. Puckett is here this morning to share some tips. And we would like to add that the following segment is sponsored by Complete Family Medicine. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. So the beginning of the school year, do we see a spike in kids getting sick at this time of year? And if so, why? We do, um, and it's for a couple reasons. Mm -hmm. um, whenever we, uh, anytime we get crowded indoors, mm -hmm. if it gets really cold and all of us spend a lot more time indoors, we'll see a spike, in, especially in viral infections and those sorts of things. And so that happens with kids. And uh, you know, kids are might have been used to the have spread the germs around amongst their their household or even their playgroups. But now that we're really mixing that up, there's mm -hmm. new germs and uh, and all kinds of uh, opportunities for them to get infected with a variety of different things and there's you know so many things change in the first part of school trying to get back into that routine and and all of uh, you know eating different foods mm -hmm. and, uh, and and the big the big thing is is just though they're they're, they're touching each other they're right. um, in close contact they're they're next to each other on the school bus. Mm -hmm. There's there's lots of increased risk for exposure and transmission of disease. So what types of illnesses surge at this time of year? Well, we, we typically see um, a, a variety of viral illnesses. Um, the the cold already starts. It, uh, you know, the, there's nothing in my mind worse than that fall cold or the mm -hmm. end of the summer cold, and we're seeing those. Um, and a lot of vi you know a lot of uh, allergies surge, and so then when you tag the fall allergy symptoms, mm -hmm. which kind of sets somebody up with the, the ability to get sick quick more quickly, and then you hand them a virus whenever they're all crowded together, um, and then also uh, belly bugs, the gastroenteritis, so the gastroenteritis, so the the diarrhea, the throw up, th those things are are going around fairly frequently, and then strep throat, and it's we've even seen a few isolated cases of influenza, uh, the common flu. And flu shots are available, so we, that's one thing we need to be doing right now um, to prevent that big wave com from coming and hitting hitting the kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, the CDC has come out with new recommendations this year for flu shots. They're not recommending flu mist for uh, for kids uh, because it's not as as. Yeah, there was one study that showed that it, they thought it wasn't a, as effective as others. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I'm completely convinced okay. because I've always been a pretty big advocate of using the live attenuated vaccine, but it's not going to be available to us this year. So that does mean that we're all going to be getting, I've already got mine. Okay. Uh, we need to be getting yes, yours. Yes, I do uh, need to get mine uh, soon. Most definitely. And uh, you may have some other vaccines we've got to get you too. Uh -oh. So we'll talk about that. <laughs> but um, but do, we do want to get that done and going and, and it's going to be a shot this year. And, uh, and so if uh, that's a little extra discussion at home but now's mm -hmm. the time get it done okay so what are some ways and things that families can do to prevent illnesses and protect their families themselves oh good good yeah um number one hygiene 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 mm -hmm. um our kids uh often uh you know they they need to be reminded that they need to wash their hands wash their hands wash their hands use the instant hand sanitizers that are available in the classrooms um, anytime they've touched something, somebody else, ooey gooey, we mm -hmm. want to be using that and reminding them not to be touching their face, their eyes, their th those sorts of things. So hygiene education and kind of uh, re refocusing on that is important. Uh, the second thing that you can do is make sure that you've got that bedtime routine in place. We, we know without a doubt that sleep is so very critical mm -hmm. and it really helps to balance the immune system and make sure that it's ready to respond appropriately if something were to come their way. So ha getting that bedtime, being firm by it, you know, they've, it's, it's tough, uh, you know, uh, trying to herd the cats to bed at night right. because they're so, uh, you know, summer's been here and that's, but it's just got to happen. And then good nutrition. Uh, that's another key thing. And when they're at school, people are having birthdays, there's more junk food around, right. that sort of thing. So we really want to focus um, not only at home, but also with what they're eating at school, that they're making good choices uh, on their food items at school. And those are the those are the primary things that we can do to prevent that. And then, of course, like we mentioned, the vaccines. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then if there's somebody that, that we know is sick, then obviously they need to not, not be in the school environment. Okay, perfect. So what we'll do is we'll post everything on our website at KT. TVO.com will link up Dr. Puckett's information with Complete Family Medicine. Again, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. And we'll be right back.